here. Um, Diane, I'll start with you. You just heard what Larry Kudlow said. Don't take this number as the totality of the economy. Earlier this morning, on the other side of the aisle, we heard Jason Furman say the numbers are only going to get worse. They're going to go towards zero and then head into negative territory in December. Which side of that debate are you on? Oh, I don't think there's any question we're going to see the numbers dip into the red in the month of December. And actually, as you look under the hood, these numbers are pretty ugly. The unemployment rate fell because participation in the labor force fell yet again in November. So those, you know, it's this false narrative to say this is an improving labor market, especially for people of color. I think that's a very wrong way to interpret these numbers. That's not what the details and the dirt in the details reveals. I also think it's important to look at the effects that we saw. This survey was taken before more restrictions were implemented, but as cases were surging due to COVID and the deceleration we've seen over the last three months is important to take into context because it really is a screeching halt in employment, our ability to generate employment at a time when we're still 9.8 million jobs in the whole, more than a million jobs than we lost um, back during the height of the 08-09 recession. And David, you know, this slowdown is coming at a time when we normally see a ramp up in the economy with increased travel, increased holiday spending. How are these two forces going to dovetail and how disappointing do you think this holiday season is going to be and potentially overshadow some other data points in the economy as well? Well, I think it, it obviously is going to be a very disappointing holiday season for uh, traditional retail. Uh, and we've seen that already over Black Friday. Uh, but I, I really think the right way to think about this is this isn't an economy that needs stimulus. It needs support uh, because what, it's, not, it's not so much tired as injured. There are big sections of this economy, leisure, entertainment, restaurants, which just can't reopen in a pandemic environment. I think it's really remarkable, as Diane was saying, that labor force participation is actually down by 4 million people since February. I went back and I looked at all the recessions since World War II. There isn't one in which the labor force was down nine months into a recession and we're down by four million people. And this, these people are really unemployed. They're not showing up as unemployed in the unemployment rate, uh, but they really are unemployed because their industries, their businesses are shut down and they can't work. So we really need to support these people through the pandemic, deal with the pandemic aggressively so that we can get this economy start again next spring. But I think it's, you know, it's completely wrong to say that the economy is recovering. We just need a little bit more room for a little bit more confidence. We can't fix this economy until we fix the pandemic. Uh, Diane, I was uh, looking at some charts this morning, tweeted one out on median duration of unemployment, which shows hardly any recovery, really. I mean, and getting close to numbers that we saw in the Great Recession, which sort of leads to what Yellen was saying earlier in the week, and that is these long-term effects of unemployment uh, create very nasty uh, externalities in society at large, and um, that's not reflected in a single jobs number. Exactly, and I think that's important. Once we hit six months and we're now seeing over a third of the labor force unemployed that are counted as unemployed, as David pointed out, they're not even all counted, now account for are now long-term unemployed more than six months. And at six months, we hit a tipping point where not only do workers that get reemployed tend to get paid less, it starts to inflict, inflict pain on family structure, on the well-being of children. We know food insecurity is rising. Donate to your food bank this holiday season. Season. It's an eternity until they even get something passed for people to get money in there, uh, enough money to pay for food for a week. This is really startling. Tent cities are starting to go up before the eviction moratoriums have already um, lapsed on December 31st. So all of these things are very important. I agree completely with David that we really need this, this to help these wounds create, inflicted by COVID to not fester. And that's what the aid is for. It's not really stimulus per se, but it keeps keeps us afloat and leaves us more of a foundation from which to rebuild upon on the other side of the crisis. But we're already seeing scarring, and that's before we get into the educational impacts and lost education and the long-term health effects on 20 to 40-year-olds, your prime age of your labor force, that even had mild cases of COVID. We don't know how long those are going to last. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.